So you're considering getting CompTIA Security Plus, but you find yourself wondering, is it really necessary to spend that 400 some odd dollars on a certification? And how much is this really going to help me break into the field? So in order to help answer that question, I'm going to do a red pill deep dive on what Security Plus actually is and what it actually provides you, contrary to popular belief. And I'm also going to talk about a new way to think about things so you can decide on your own if Security Plus or any certification for that matter is really worth it. And spoiler alert, I don't think Security Plus is actually bad and I'm not planning on bad mouthing it, but it does require a little bit of explaining. And real quick before we get started, I'm going to be doing a cash giveaway in this video, so just check the pinned comment for details. So getting right into the content, in my opinion, most people don't really understand what Security Plus is or what it provides because we have people in one camp who think it's absolutely useless and doesn't provide any real value whatsoever. And then you have people on the other side who think it's absolutely mandatory to get Security Plus or you will not be able to get into the field. And the whole reason I decided to make this video is because in another video, I kind of broke down and compared to Google's new cybersecurity program versus CompTIA Security Plus. And I looked at them both like really holistically across a bunch of different metrics. And I kind of found in the end, in my opinion, that Google Cybersecurity Program was overall better than CompTIA Security Plus, or at least provided better value. And there ended up being a lot of people who didn't like that opinion very much at all, and they let me know in the comment section. And I did respond to some of them, and a lot of those people ended up actually deleting their comments, so I can't show them to you. I'm so sorry. But that whole thing made me realize a lot of people like think about certifications way different than I do, so I kind of wanted to share my thoughts in hopes that it will help you kind of think about certification differently differently going forward. And I do want to say before I get started, this video is not going to be like, you know, I think Google's program is better or like Security Plus is bad or, or anything like this. I just want to talk about the way I think about certification because I think the way I think about them is actually correct. And I really want to get other people's thoughts and opinions on this. So that's why I'm kind of doing the cash giveaway to force people to watch the whole video and give me their feedback. Getting right into my thought process, when you're trying to break into IT or cybersecurity or most fields for that matter, it's better to think about yourself as if you're a character in an RPG game and you need to get armor in order to increase your stats and you need those stats in order to complete quests, i.e. get a job. And instead of acquiring armor and like a breastplate and swords and stuff like this to boost your stats, in real life you'll get things like certification, education, tech skill, resume portfolio, and this kind of thing. These are the things that like boost your stats in real life. So here you are, a level one cybersecurity initiate. These are all the stats that you have to worry about. And let's just assume for this example that they're basically all zero when you start out. So let's say you go out, you spend about two months and $500 on some training material in the CompTIA Security Plus exam, and then you pass it the first time, which is great. But just by looking at this without knowing what the other person's stats are and assuming they're zero, it's really obvious that just getting Security Plus is not really enough to get a job, especially in cybersecurity. Obviously, you don't need all of these stats to be maxed out, whatever that means, and some of them can even be zero. You just need some of them to be high enough in order to get hired by somebody. And I want to touch on each one of these stats really briefly, but before that, I just want to talk about certification a little bit. A lot of people confuse having a certification with actually having some type of skill, but actually these two things are decoupled. And what I mean by that is you can definitely have certification without any real knowledge or skill, and you can have skill in real knowledge without actually having obtained the certification. So for example, somebody either crams for and cheats and somehow passes Security Plus, you will have a certification on your resume. It will be useful to some extent. It will help you get an interview. On the other side, somebody could you know study up for a security Security Plus absolutely perfectly, have all the knowledge in the world and just be like perfect, but they never bother to take in the exam. So the skill and like ability and the certification in and of themselves are two different things. They're decoupled. So because of this, you can kind of see how I say Security Plus provides you with two different things of varying degrees. Like Security Plus does have name value, so having it on your resume will help, may help you get an interview. And we can kind of assume you pick up some kind of knowledge and technical ability on the way, but it's, it's not gonna be that much because it's purely theoretical, but there is some. So that's kind of how I think about Security Plus. So beyond having a certification or, or even a degree, there's a lot of other stuff that you have to worry about. And I guarantee a lot of people don't even think about this. A lot of people have this mentality like, like, okay, I got my credential. Let me trade it for like one job, please. Like one, one security analyst job for my, my security plus or whatever. But it's just like not how it works. There's a lot of other stuff you have to worry about. And this is kind of where it gets interesting. So looking at this, these are the areas of the things you need to worry about for your stats. I'm not going to talk too long about each one of them. And they're a little bit arbitrary, like, you know, what 0% is and what 100% is. It just kind of depends on the job you're going for. But I kind of arranged these in the order of easiest 
easiest, like most the cheapest to implement at the top down to the most difficult to implement at the bottom. So I'll just kind of talk about these briefly. So basically consistency is, it is what it is. Like how consistent are you throughout the process? How consistent are you with your studies and like application and, and everything? Obviously the more consistent you are, the faster you're going to end up getting a job or whatever it is you're trying to do. Application execution, that is when you get to the stage when you're actually applying, how well are you, are you applying, right? Are you doing tailored resumes for each job and like keyword matching and keeping track of all of your applications? Or are you just kind of randomly doing one click applies and not putting a lot of care into your applications? Because it, it does make a difference, right? It really does make a difference. So self-presentation is, are you wearing a nice button shirt and grooming yourself before your Zoom interviews or your in-person interviews? Or are you wearing like pajamas and like a hat or something? Or like what version of yourself are you presenting to people? Because it's not like if you wear a suit, you're not going to automatically get hired, right? But if you wear pajamas and a hat, that, that will prevent you from getting hired. So it's one of those easy things that you can do to kind of maximize your chances, right? Your self-presentation. So for communication, this is both verbal and written. Do you, you use spell check before you send the emails to the hiring manager? When you're in your interview, do you actually listen to them and respond? Or are you like an arrogant person with like typos and stuff? In your emails, like, you know, where do you fall on this communication spectrum? Because it's not like having perfect communication is going to get you hired, but having bad communication will definitely prevent you from getting hired. And I know people do a bad job of this because I've reviewed so many resumes. It's such an easy gimme to make sure that your communication skill is maxed out. You have to worry about it because it matters. And resume quality, I could talk about this a lot, but basically your resume needs to be easily readable by both humans and application tracking systems. When you have a nice fancy looking resume that you think humans like to look at, the ATS might not even be able to read it and it will like automatically remove your eligibility for you know half the jobs you apply to depending on like how your resume looks. So that's something you need to care about and you need to worry about that. And portfolio quality. Most people don't even have a portfolio. And if you're trying to break into IT or cybersecurity, you should 100% have a portfolio because when you're doing your Zoom interview, right, somebody will ask you about something like Azure Active Directory, for instance, and you can be like, oh, I'm actually doing a project on that. Do you mind if I share my screen with you for a moment and, and show you my project? As somebody who's hired people before, if a candidate did that to me, that's like a plus 30 to 50% chance of them getting hired, like depending on like what the other candidates do. But it, it's so good and so useful and it's not something that's like really hard to create. So just think about that and make yourself a portfolio. Here's an example portfolio of one of my students who went through my course. It looks beautiful, it looks great. And I would, I would love to see this if a candidate showed this to me. And then getting to experience, you might be being like, okay, like I need experience to get experience. That's like a catch 22 scenario, but you'd be surprised like the level of experience you can kind of generate for yourself. It's almost the equivalent of real world experience. So for example, just studying about security plus like the theory portion might be like the equivalent of reading an F-22 fighter pilot manual, right? You haven't flown it, but you have some idea of how it works and then doing some actual labs, like controlled labs in a controlled environment, like doing hack the box or something like this, that might be the equivalent of like hopping in an F-22 flight simulator and then, you know, getting a better idea of how the plane works and like, you know, shooting targets and stuff in that game in the flight simulator. And then taking it a step further and then creating an environment in the cloud and exposing that, like maybe on Azure, exposing your virtual machines and stuff, to the public internet where people are actually attacking your stuff, like actual bad actors are attacking your stuff and you practice incident response against them and then you know harden your environment and all of this. That's the equivalent of like hopping inside of an actual F-22 and then you're not going to war, but maybe you're shooting like actual like kinetic targets and like blowing stuff up. That's pretty close to the real thing. That's almost the real thing. And that's something that you can do for yourself for free essentially. So that's just something to keep in mind. And social networks. So for example, you should probably create a LinkedIn, make sure it's perfectly filled out and everything. Maybe create profiles on Indeed and ZipRecruiter or something like this. And then, you know, of course you can take it a step further and you publish content, right? Maybe you get like a thousand subs on YouTube or a thousand followers on LinkedIn. The more you have in this area, it's just going to help you. Like some people have zero and you can still get a job with zero, but if you 
get more of a social presence, it's, it's definitely going to be a net positive. And then getting into interview skill, you would be surprised how many people just straight up raw dog their interview. They just get an interview and they're like, I hope I do well. And they, they just go to it without practicing or like researching the company or anything like this. So like what I would recommend is when you, once you get an interview, like obviously research the company and then take the job description and then feed the job description to chat GPT and be like, generate me 25 interview questions based off this job description. And it will gen generate 25 pretty decent ones. And then you can take it a step further and then you can ask chat GPT like, okay, please answer this interview question, please answer this one. And then you can kind of get an idea of like the things, the type of things you can say during the interview. And beyond that, I, I highly recommend you, you don't even need a partner to do this, but you need to practice articulating your answer to these questions because once you get in the interview, you're like half your brain is going to go away. And if you didn't practice beforehand, you're going to end up saying something that doesn't make sense, or you're going to have some kind of re regrets after the interview. It's just something that you can easily do to increase your chances of having a successful interview. So many people don't do this and it's so crazy to me. So please care about this. So technical ability, this is pretty obvious what it is, like your ability to execute things in the field that you're worried about. So what I kind of recommend you do for this is find a really nice lab and then just implement that lab many, many times over and over again until you can just do it off the top of your head. I have a bunch on my channel. You can find a bunch on the internet. Um, for my course, I, I recommend the students go through the technical portion of the course at least like three times because every time you, you implement a lab, you gain some kind of intuition or like plus one knowledge on it. And the more times you implement something, even if it's, you know, the same simple lab, like four or five times, you're going to be able to talk about that really, really effortlessly and easily when it comes time to interview. And it's really, really helpful. And people don't realize this or they underestimate it or they just don't do it. But please find a good lab somewhere and practice it many, many, many times. And it's just going to be really helpful when it comes time to interview. Getting right into certification. Um, I don't mean like what knowledge the certification gives. I mean like the certification that appears on your resume. That's what's meant by this stat. So for example, if you get Security Plus, because a lot of employers know what Security and Plus is and it's gonna keyword match a lot on your resume, Security and Plus probably is gonna have like a better quote unquote stat than Google's cybersecurity professional certification. In my opinion, like holistically speaking, Google cybersecurity professional certification is gonna give you better stats overall because what's inside of it, but just for the certification stat itself, the Security Plus probably provides a better one because it's more well known. That's how I think about certification. And then finally, formal education. This will be like, you know, high school, college, and that type of thing. So if you have like a high school diploma versus an associate's degree versus a bachelor's degree versus a master's degree, your stat is going to look different in this case. And I just want to reiterate the fact that you don't need all of these to be like, quote unquote, maxed out in order to get a job. Like some of them can even be zero. And depending on who's reviewing your application, some of the stats are going to be more important than others. That's why I have the opinion that it's your responsibility to raise all of your stats as much as you can just be like economically smart about it right like don't go out and get a phd before buying a, a button down shirt right you can be really economical about it and you can have some pretty decent looking stats for nearly free right you just have to be smart about it also i want to talk about people often say things to me like oh like which degree should i get like do i get my bachelor's degree in cybersecurity and like cissp is enough to be a security engineer and i'm like well yeah it can be enough you you know, assuming you take care of like your personal hygiene and like you you practice your interview and stuff because you can have all the you can have all the stats in the world and you can have like a zero on communication and you'll you'll never get a job, right? I've worked with people who are like I'm I'm pretty strong on paper if you look at my LinkedIn and I've worked with people who are like way stronger than me on paper but they're absolutely horrible in the workplace because they're they're either like arrogant or they can't be trained or they have some other like really like one of their stats is zero and it just makes them horrible right when you see people like they're like oh I got security plus and I can't get a job like you don't know what their other stats look like you don't know what they're doing when they get to the interview they could be like perfect in the interview and then maybe when they walk out they like flip the interview off or something like this. This is like an extreme example, but you know, flipping the interviewer off might be the equivalent, you know, of having like a zero communication skill or something like this. You don't know what people are doing. So when I when I coach people and like how to get a job, I, I show this thing to them and like please be aware of like yourself from a holistic standpoint. You need to make sure like everything is like as good as it can possibly be, right? 
And real quick, going back to Security Plus and the Google Cybersecurity Program, if you get Security Plus, you can assume you will at least have these stats, assuming you you know legitimately got it. You'll have a little bit of technical ability and knowledge, and then you'll have a decent cert starting out, right? As opposed to if you get the Google Cybersecurity Certificate, Google is well known, but the cert is like not really well known yet. So the cert stat is definitely going to be lower. But if you do everything that's talked about in the program, you're gonna at least have like some kind of decent resume you're going to have some kind of decent portfolio communication skill. You'll be aware of how to interview because they talk about that in the program and they give tips on it. So you'll have overall, you'll have better stats than if you just, you know, pass the Security Plus program. That's my opinion. And that's why I think the Google Cybersecurity program is better. Not not to mention the technical portion of Google's program is, is pretty interactive and it covers way more than Security Plus. It's just better in my opinion. So if you absorbed, if you completely absorbed one of these certifications over the other, in my opinion, like the Google one is just, is just better because it is. That's not to say that you could just get Security Plus on your own and then take care of those other stats for free, right? With YouTube or like my channel or, you know, however else you want to satisfy those stats. It's just kind of up to you. I'm just talking about those two certs like in a vacuum, right? If that makes sense. So going back and answering the, the main question of this video, is Security Plus necessary? Obviously it's not necessary, right? Because look at this person, assuming they're like some kind of absolute God, they just don't have any certifications. They have like max out everything else and no certification. That means no Security Plus. Obviously, they can go out and do whatever they want and they can literally work wherever they want, right? You don't need a Security Plus to break into the field, but it, it does make sense to get it sometimes because, you know, it's just basically trading a couple months and 200 bucks for a decent sword, right? Or like a decent helmet or a set of armor. Like you get a, a decent cert out of it and you get some decent knowledge and technical ability in exchange for, you know, 500, four or $500 in some of your time, right? It's not a bad trade-off, right? Same thing with the Google cybersecurity program. You know, it's not a bad trade-off. You trade, you know, probably, probably it's gonna cost you maybe 150, $200 for that program. You have a, like, you'll get like a decent set of armor out of it, right? Some decent stats. I don't think it's stupid to get security plus or any cert for that matter. You just need to think about it in terms of your own personal stats and your own financial situation and just think about if it's like economically smart or economically viable to get it. For most people, it, it tends to make sense, which is why a lot of security practitioners have Security Plus. It's not required, right? The only time Security Plus is required is when you're working for a Department of Defense. They can require you to get Security Plus. And some organizations might like, quote unquote, require you to get it so they can meet some kind of like partner status or something like this. But very often, even defense contractors, they'll like hire you preemptively and they'll tell you to get Security Plus within the first like two months or something like this. So no, it's not necessary, but it can be very helpful. In the end, it's really up to you to be honest with yourself and evaluate your own stats. Use the picture of this Wojak on it if you want. Look where you're missing gaps. You know, think about like how much time and money you're willing to spend for each stat. Be smart about it. Raise them up as much as you can and go out and get a job. Thanks for watching and best of luck.